Welcome to the master module Evolutionary Ecology. This video explains how to collect soil living organisms, in particular the mesofauna. We collect animals from two different habitats, from forest and from grassland. The second part shows how we extract animals from the soil matrix and how to collect them for storage and further analysis. Mesofauna are animals that are smaller than 2 mm. You cannot see them with your bare eyes, not to mention collect them directly from the field. You need to collect the animals with the environment in which they live and then extract them slowly from the soil. We start with the sampling campaign and we begin in the forest. The material you need to collect soil animals are a trowel, a plastic bag or box with a lid, pen and paper to label your samples. When you are in a forest, you first choose a good spot, a spot with a lot of litter on the forest floor. Rotting wood is also attractive for most soil animals. A humid spot is also good. Make sure it is okay to collect organic material in this spot. Do not sample in protected nature reserve areas. Sampling soil animals is always invasive because you remove material from the field. When you found a promising spot, first remove the fresh litter, that is dead leaves and sticks and branches that do not show any signs of decay. If it's not rotting, it's not interesting. Below the litter from the previous seasons is a layer of partly decayed, shredded and lumped organic material that often is fused by fungal mycelia. This is interesting. Mesofauna, that is mainly columbula and orobatid mites, feed on fungi or on dead organic material of which fungi already digested the unpalatable parts. In this rotting material you find the most animals we are interested in. To collect as many animals as possible, you scrape off the moldy, partly decayed organic matter. Also, collect the topsoil layer. Mesofauna also lives in deeper soil layers, but their diversity and abundances are much lower in deeper soil layers than an organic top layer. Remove sticks and branches. You don't need those. Scrape everything into your bag or box. Add a label that tells you when and where you collected the material. Write down the date, the location, the type of habitat and any characteristics. Seal the bag or box and bring it home. Let's have a look at a soil profile to better see where most soil organisms live. This is the fresh litter from the previous season on top of a layer of decaying material. In this sample, the decaying matter is only a little mixed into the soil layer. Here, in the decaying, moldy organic layer and the organic soil directly below, are the most soil-living animals. Now we sample on grassland. It can also be a meadow or pasture. Sampling grasslands also brings oribatid mites and columbula, but you find different species than in a forest. It is even easier to collect animals here than in a forest, but make sure it is okay to take samples, in particular if it's private property. You need a spade, a plastic bag or box with a lid, pen and paper to label your samples. With a spade, you cut out a piece of grass with soil. In the top layer are mosses and decaying organic material. Here you find the most animals. You only need to take the top 5 to 10 centimeters of soil. In this sample, it is a bit much of soil. You can dig less deep. Try to keep the grass patch intact and put it into your plastic bag or plastic box. Add the label with date, location, habitat and characteristics. Seal the container and carry it home. Bring your collected material to the institute and we will do the following extraction steps so that you can use your own material during the course. Alternatively, if you like, you can do the following soil animal extraction for a small sample or several small samples at home too. At the end of the video, you will find some helpful links. The most common way to extract the tiny soil animals from the soil matrix is to use a Burley's funnel. The idea is simple. The collected litter or soil sample or grass patch is placed on a mesh. Above the mesh is a heat source. Below the mesh is a cooling substrate in which soil organisms are also trapped. Usually this is glycol or ethanol because it conserves the animals. But these liquids kill the animals. We use water to catch the animals alive. Most soil animals can live submerged in water for many days or weeks. The heat source is a natural repellent for soil organisms and the animals move away from the heat. Additionally, the heat is drying out the samples from the top. Drought is also something soil organisms do not like. Therefore, they start crawling down towards the areas that are still cooler and still humid. After a couple of days, when the sample is completely dry, the organisms finally drop out of the sample into the cool liquid below. In our soil lab, we are not using Berlis funnels because we often collect large samples that do not really fit in these funnels. We are using the soil extraction method after Kempsen. 
which uses the very same principles of a heat gradient, but we can work with many samples at the same time and with large samples. Now we will have a look how it works in our lab. We use boxes with the wire mesh that holds the samples. The old curtain fabric is added to keep soil and other small particles from falling down into the water or other collection fluids. We try to keep the dirt away from the samples. The soil and litter is spread out on the fabric. Again, remove sticks and branches. We do not need these. They may contain juvenile or abetted mites, but these do not leave the branches. Another box is filled with water, about 1-2 to two centimeters deep. The box with the sample is placed on top of the water-filled box. Add the label to the sample. We cover the boxes because the soil contains eggs and larvae of insects that may hatch and develop quickly due to the heat source. The cover prevents the new generation of insects from escaping the box and flying around everywhere. For the grassland samples, the setup is the same. The only difference is that we turn the grass patch upside down. Most organisms live in the organic top layer. It is easier to crawl in this direction than finding a way through the complete soil matrix. Again, the box with the sample is placed on top of a box filled up with water. Add the label and cover up the sample. Now, the stacked boxes with our samples and water below move to these cabinets, which we call Kempson extractors. The bottom plate is constantly cooled. Remember, soil organisms like it cool and humid and will move towards the cool ground. On top, there is a radiator, which is the heat source. To control the temperature, we place a thermometer connected to a thermostat in one sample. It will take several days to extract animals from samples of this size. We constantly increase the temperature in these cabinets, starting with 25 degrees Celsius at day 1 and increase the temperature by 5 degrees Celsius every day for one week. It is important to take enough time for soil animal extraction. If temperatures are too high at the beginning and the soil samples dry quickly, many animals do not have enough time to move away from the heat and the drought and die on their way without having a chance to drop into the liquid below. After one week, the samples usually are completely hard dried and the soil organisms have had enough time to leave the soil and drop into the water filled box. This is what you often find in soil samples. To look at the animals, we need to filter them from the water. We use a very fine gauze. The mesh size pre-selects what you find in your samples. We use a mesh size of 100 micrometers. This will keep the smallest of oribetid mites, but also tardigrades and the larger microfauna in the sample. We fix the gauze and pour the content of the collection box through a funnel. All extracted soil animals are now on the gauze. We flush everything on the gas into a smaller collection tube. From this point on we use ethanol. This kills the animals but conserves them and their DNA. And here you have your ready to use sample. In preparation for this course, each participant should collect a bag or box with soil or litter samples from any location and habitat you like. You can also collect mosses from tree trunks or swamps, if these are not protected areas or species. A collection from different sites and habitats will provide us with a greater diversity of species. Bring the sample to the Institute of Animal Ecology. We keep them cool and start the extraction so that they are ready to use on the first day of the course. Additionally, you can bring your own extracted samples. On YouTube, you find tutorials to craft your own Belize funnel. Remember, it will take a couple of days for the animals to leave the soil matrix. 
Before starting the extraction, you can fetch collection vials and ethanol from my office. More details for your own sampling campaign and the deadline for bringing your samples to the Institute are outlined in the same email that contained the link to this video. Have fun on your sampling campaign! See you in the course!